So today we are going to discuss the turbulent flow of blood. We are discussing blood flow. We have discussed laminar flow of blood and now today we are going to discuss the turbulent flow of blood. So turbulent flow means blood flows crosswise in the vessel as well as along the vessel that forms walls in the blood called eddy current. Turbulent flow means blood flows crosswise. Here is the laminar flow of blood and the, you can see the blood is flowing in a streamline along the vessel. But in turbulent flow, in turbulent flow, the blood is flowing not only along the vessel, but it is also moving crosswise. So here is the turbulent flow. Here the blood is not only moving along the vessel, it is also moving crosswise, crossing the uh, layers. Each and every layer of the blood is crossing every uh, the other layer and they are move, moving crosswise. So that is known as the turbulent flow. And due to the turbulence, basically walls are formed. Walls is any spiral movement of the water or air, which you have seen. When these things are formed, these walls are formed in the blood, they are known as eddy currents. Such eddy currents, when, when eddy currents are present, blood flows with much greater resistance. So, in the turbulence flow of blood, blood is flowing not only along the vessel, but it is also moving crosswise, which leads to the formation of walls like this. And this is known as eddy current. When these eddy currents, when these eddy currents are formed in the blood vessel, it leads to greater resistance. And blood moves with greater resistance, much more resistance than in the streamline uh, or the laminar flow of blood. In the laminar flow of blood, we discussed that the blood is basically flowing in a smooth vessel. It is moving along the vessel and each layer is maintaining a distance from the layer and the vessel wall and the central layer of the blood is basically in the center of the vessel. All those factors are not satisfied, all those, all those rules of the laminar flow are, are not followed by the turbulent flow of blood. Here you can see the blood is not flowing in a streamline, rather it is moving in crosswise as well. It is moving along the vessel but it is also moving crosswise it is forming walls and it is not the layers of the blood are not maintaining distances from each other regular distance so and the the cause of this type of blood is basically a rough surface the the vessel in the laminar flow on the inside is most of the time very smooth which leads to a streamlined flow but in turbulence flow the surface of the blood may be rough due to some reasons this is basically a cause of the turbulence but there are other causes of the turbulence as well so what are the causes of the turbulence causes of turbulence include increased rate of blood those vessels in which the blood is flowing with a high rate there are high chances of such current occurring or such turbulence occurring the second reason is obstruction if the blood vessel has been obstructed with something, a blood clot or anything or a rough surface, it will also lead to turbulent flow. Another thing is sharp turn of the blood, sharp turn of the blood. For example, this is a blood vessel and here the blood vessel has been divided into two other branches. At these sharp turns with a high rate, there is a high chance of such turbulence occurring and the blood flow will not be, remain smooth lines and finally rough surface if the surface of the blood vessel from the inside is not smooth and it is rough due to any reason for example cholesterol has been deposited here erythro erythromas have been uh, formed here it will also lead to turbulence of the blood flow so to summarize turbulent flow is basically the presence of not only along the vessel movement of the blood but it is also presence of crosswise movement of the blood this crosswise movement of the blood inside the vessel leads to formation of walls that is known as eddy current when this type of these types of walls are formed in the blood vessel that is known as eddy current 
it leads to greater resistance for the movement of blood blood cannot move easily and the causes of turbulence inside the blood vessels are increased rate of movement increased rate of movement of the blood obstruction of the blood vessel sharp turns in the blood vessel and rough surface on the inner side of the blood vessel now how we are going to measure the tendency for turbulence like if we have two blood vessels how will we decide that in which blood vessel which vessel will have high tendency for turbulence so there is uh, an equation known as reynolds number through which we can calculate the tendency for turbulence and we can calculate that which vessel will have high tendency for turbulence so the reynolds number basically includes velocity of the blood vessel uh, velocity of the blood in the vessel diameter of the vessel and then uh, this is known as a rho rho is basically showing the density of the blood and then this is eta eta is basically showing the viscosity of the blood so basically this reynolds number can be used for any fluid to calculate the ter the tendency for turbulence and this reynolds number is basically also used for to to calculate the tendency of turbulence in any vessel and it includes the velocity of blood in that vessel diameter of the that blood vessel density of the blood and viscosity of the blood so if we calculate all these factors and we put the values we will have uh, an a clear picture of the the tendency and we uh, of for turbulence in that specific vessel for example if the reynolds number is around 200 to 400 which is present normally in the normal arteries then turbulence will occur at branches only turbulence will occur only at branches but but will not occur anywhere in in smooth blood vessels the turbulence will occur when the reynolds number is more than like 2000 if the reynolds number is more than 2000 then turbulence will occur in smooth vessels as well for example in the aorta which is the biggest artery and the pulmonary artery these two arteries are the examples of the blood vessels in which there is high chance of turbulence due to the reynolds number reaching uh, up to 2000 and this this reynolds number of 2000 plus in aorta and pulmonary artery is specifically high in the initial portions of the aorta and pulmonary artery in systole when the heart is contracting and pumping the blood because if we consider these blood vessels we will see that the diameter of these blood vessels is very much large other if if other arteries are this much the aorta is like very much large as compared to the normal artery for example if the aorta is like three or four times larger the diameter is definitely larger so the reynolds number will definitely increase in aorta same same go, goes for the pulmonary artery at the initial portion of the pulmonary artery then the velocity of blood when the heart is pumping blood the speed of the blood is high at the at the moment of contraction rather than at the capillaries level so velocity is also high in the aorta and diameter diameter is also high in the aorta and pulmonary arteries which leads to a higher reynolds number in these branches and a higher reynolds number basically showing shows a high tendency for turbulence in these blood vessels so to summarize turbulent blood flow basically means blood flow crosswise in the vessel as well as along the vessel this this flow of blood basically forms walls or spiral shaped movement of the blood in the in the blood that are known as eddy current in the blood flow walls are formed or spiral movement of blood are occurring that is known as eddy current and that's due to the crosswise movement of the blood and when these walls are formed these spiral movements of blood are formed inside the blood flow then the resistance to the blood flow increase and the chances of turbulence increases due to the high rate of flow due to obstruction due to sharp turns of the blood 
at the branches and due to rough surfaces. To measure the tendency of turbulence, we can calculate an equation known as the Reynolds number. Reynolds number basically includes the velocity of blood flow, the diameter of the vessel in which blood is flowing, density of the blood and viscosity of the blood. So according to this rule, any blood vessel which will have higher diameter and higher velocity of blood, it will have high tendency of turbulence. For example, the initial portion of the aorta and initial portion of the pulmonary arteries. So that's all about the turbulent flow of blood and Reynolds number. Thanks a lot for watching the video.